In ITER labs around the world, scientists are collaborating, designing, prototyping, and ultimately producing over 10 million parts. Then, all those components need to be transported to the main site in the south of France. The ITER project and the collaborative style makes it like a jigsaw puzzle. The player knows where the pieces are going to go, but doesn't know until the final moment if they're going to fit. And that is one of the drawbacks of this collaboration of states which are putting together ITER. We're now in 2017, but in terms of the timescale, getting to that first key experiment, I understand it's 2025. Is that the timescale you're looking for, the first big test of ITER? We have been reviewing the whole uh, project schedule and the best technically achievable uh, first plasma events will be 2025, end of 2025. We could not do it earlier. You have to realize that some of the components take more than five years to manufacture because they are very complex. Why? You will have a huge magnetic cages which have to contain and confine a plasma as I say, two grams of hydrogen with a temperature of 150 million of degrees. You could imagine, you need to be sure that everything is well set uh, with the magnetic line properly, okay, position and all these things. So you need a very huge precision, despite you, you, you use very large piece of component. So we have a, a decade of experiments from 2025. And thereafter, when are we going to get to the, the result which will mean we have commercial viability of fusion? I believe that around 2040, okay, we will have the real answer. Okay, we know that we are able to produce a huge amount of fusion power with okay, so, uh, a very uh, okay, reasonable amount of, of heat. At this turning point, I do believe that okay, the industry will be very keen to optimize the process of, uh, of building such a facility and operating them. So before the uh, mid of this century, we will know if fusion is really the uh, energy uh, technology for the uh, energy supply for the world. As I said, not just for century, even not millennium, hundreds of millions of years. So if the technology actually works, and you're very confident it will, it's going to change the world. It's going to change world economies. It's going to change the financial dynamics of a lot of current energy producers. Is that potentially a challenge or a worry or, or something that's going to prevent its progress? Once we will know that this technology is working, and because of this large international cooperation, with the commitment of all the seven members to make this technology available everywhere in the world, okay, it will be a big change also in the international relationship. You know, if you have a source of energy which is available, clearly demonstrating its assets, and which could last for hundreds of millions of years, I do believe that everybody will consider seriously how we could develop this technology jointly. There are a lot of very big international partners involved in this as well, but will it always be such a collaborative process, open source intellectual property, so to speak? It is the spirit of this agreement. Okay, the spirit of this agreement is a large country which have the technology, which have the resources, are working together in order to make this clear demonstration. Once the demonstration will be done, it will be up to any country in the world to take advantage of this demonstration. So there is no prevention in the ITER agreement to disseminate largely the knowledge we have. Still watching? Perfect. Click here to watch another great video from CNBC International. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.